This stuff, section six, is arithmetic sequences, or some people maybe say arithmetic sequences. I learned it the other way. Um, really, I, th I think this type of stuff is really kind of fun. And we just grazed the surface of it a little bit. I know in algebra too, at least the book I taught out of, we came around to it three times throughout the year in three different chapters. We came to sequences. I'm going to start just by saying, uh, what is it? Maybe I should have said, what are they, since sequences is plural in my title, but basically, what is a sequence? And I'm going to start out just with, okay, a sequence then. This is kind of the Falk definition of the truth. A sequence is really just going to be a list of numbers in a certain order. So it's a list of numbers in a certain order. So a list of numbers in a certain order. And sometimes there will be a nice rule that goes along with it. Sometimes there's not. Uh, for example, you could have something like, maybe example one, my first sequence will be one, two, four, eight. So kind of how are we getting from one number to the next number in that thing there? Multiplying, Multiplying by two. So this one has a, a rule that goes along with it. But it. So I'll put a dot, dot, dot for that it keeps going. It doesn't have to be something quite like that, though. Like, for example, if you were to have the sequence 8, 6, 7, 5, 3, 0, killed my O. Oh, don't want to do that. Anybody see the next number? <laughs> yeah. So 8, 6, 7, 5, 3, 0. Oh. It's a song. Does this sound familiar? Three o. Oh, nine. Nine. Eight six seven five three o nine. Okay. It's like an '80s song. Eight six seven five three o. Okay. No. Um. Let's move on. <laughs> and I am officially way older than you. To say this. This actually, I'll, I'd leave a little space. I'd leave two lines there. We'll say a term. A term is going to be each number. in a sequence. So each number in a sequence. I'm not sure why, but instead of referring to it as the first number and the second number, they'll call it the first term and the second term. Uh, is the number eight there, instead of referring to the number eight as being the first number in the sequence, they'll just call that the first term. So eight is the first term. The six then is going to be the second term. And then the five, if I jump down a little bit, the five would be the fourth term. With a seven in between being the third term, I just don't really remember to write it well. So Make sense? So term is just kind of synonymous with saying it's, it's this number in the sequence, it's, it's this term. Then, jumping ahead a little bit, uh, the official definition of one of those arithmetic sequences then, so... spelled arithmetic, but an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic sequence. We said before, or I said before, that going back to those initial examples, uh, the first one we multiplied by two to get from one number to the next. The second one was just off of a phone number. Whenever you have an arithmetic sequence, you're adding to get from one number to the next, or subtracting kind of thing. Um, the book writes it this way. It's a sequence... where you get from one, instead of saying one number to the next, they're going to say from one term, term nice, term, to the next by adding a and I've heard it a couple different ways. Our book says common difference. I've also heard like constant difference. So common difference. So a couple examples now just of this type of sequence. You could say, maybe I'll call it example, I guess we're up to three now. Um, example three 
if my first number is 1, my second number is 4, my third number must be, if it's arithmetic, uh, seven. 7. 7. Because to get from one number to the next, every time I'm adding 3. That if you know it's arithmetic and we added 3 that first time, then you know that it has to be 3 is that common difference. So every time you get from one number to the next, you add 3. Good? Now, the question would become, so example 4, could this fit with an arithmetic sequence? If I have my first term being 10, my second number being 8, my third term being 6, arithmetic or not arithmetic? You're subtracting. So it seems like it doesn't fit the definition, right? But if I want to subtract 2, what number could I add to subtract 2? Yep, you could add a negative 2. So this one here is also arithmetic, but now we're adding a negative 2. So if you wanted to, you could even write plus a negative 2. Um, plus a negative 2. I don't have enough room to really write it well. But that in that case, that common difference is going to be a negative 2. So arithmetic sequences could be going up, that would be adding a positive, but it also could be going down, that would be adding a negative. D is that common difference, and our book doesn't actually define it quite that way, maybe I shouldn't have put it in there, but you'll see it soon. So I'm going to write out common difference, and if you feel like you know it, maybe skip writing it, but the common difference then, so common difference. That's simply uh, what you add. Uh, what? I'm going to write add really large because it's possible that if it's going down, it's easy to say like a 2 if you're subtracting 2, but you're really adding a negative 2 uh, to get from one term to the next. To get the next term. in an arithmetic sequence. We will take the quiz. But want to kind of make a point then, if I have, this is my fifth example of a sequence now, if I have 1 and then 4 and then 9 and then 16, dot, dot, dot. Would that fit as an arithmetic sequence? No. No, because... It's not the same for each one. It's not the same. That with the first one, I'm adding 3. Second one, I'm adding plus 5, plus 7. So I'm adding odds. If you're looking for that common difference, if I wanted to take and figure out that 5, what could I do to my 4 and 9 to figure out the 5? 9 minus 4 degree gives you 5? So whenever you're looking for a common difference, you could always just take a number like the 8, subtract the number before it. 8 minus 10 gives negative 2. 6 minus 8 also gives you the negative 2. 4 minus 6, negative 2. So to find a common difference, uh, take some term in the sequence and subtract the term before it. All right, Roman numeral 2, function notation. Function notation. Here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of find a way to write out sequences quickly. So instead of saying the first term is this and to find the next term, you always add 8 or something like that. Um, what we're going to do is this. So I'm going to write out a, a sequence. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. You probably don't need to do as much. but um, This one here is going to be my first term. So it's my first term. What they often will do is instead of writing out the first term, they'll do some letter. Often they'll do an A for now because it's an arithmetic or arithmetic sequence. They'll do an A for that. But then they'll put a little 1 in the subscript. So the subscript is going to be the number that's kind of down below. It's usually not part of the math. It's not like A times 1. It's not A to the first power. It's not A plus 1. It's just the first A. Good? So my 5 then is going to be my second term. So for that, we would write a sub 2. 
And then the eighth's going to be the third term. Eventually, we would just call that a sub three. Oh, the sub is just what you say, A, and then the sub means it's a subscript. It's down below. So typically, you write it a little bit smaller, and you put it down below. Now, we're following a pattern that if you look at this, 1, 2, and 3, those are all natural numbers, right? It's the counting numbers, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You start at 1, there's no decimals. Now, this is going to be the part that if there's anything in this section, makes your brain kind of like seize up in a knot a little bit. Uh, but stick with me. Don't stress out about it. We want to have a way of writing some generic term out here. And if we have a way to write that term, then we're going to be able to use that to make an equation for the sequence. Close. It'd be a sub 4 if it's the fourth term, but this is just going to be some. It could be the fourth. It could be the 17th. It could be the millionth term. What they... A N Y N. Ooh, it's an N because one, two, and three were what type of numbers? Counting numbers. We also call them natural numbers. So they do A sub N because they're trying to represent N as being some natural number. It has to be A sub one, A sub two, A sub three. It couldn't be like A sub one point five. There's not a one and a half term that's miraculously there between the two and the five. Um, so A sub N is going to equal what they call the nth term. And in a moment, you're going to see that in an equation. And what you do is, it's kind of like where we had f of x. This I wouldn't write for sure, but um, on the quiz, we're going to have something like this, right? And we're going to say, find f of 5. And the key was, 5 is in the same spot as that x, so you just take the 5 replaces the x, and we get a 2 times 5, right? We're going to do that same sort of thing, but now we're going to do that with a formula that has a sub n in it. You take whatever's in that n spot, if it's a sub 5, then you put a 5 in for n in the equation. So it's probably a little bit unclear at this point, but just give it a second. I think you guys will be fine. So a sub n is the nth term. And basically, you could say n is a natural number. And by that, we mean a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or dot, 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 something like that. We're up to the last part of the notes. Can I flip the page? Then Roman numeral 3 is going to be explicit formulas. A little bit later, you'll get a different type of formula, a recursive formula. Um, this is going to be an explicit one. It's the more powerful one, but it's a little bit tougher to work with um, for arithmetic sequences. And despite it being a little bit strange at the onset, I'm confident you guys will all get this well. Um, this is going to be worth memorizing. So I'm going to put it in red. I'm going to put a box around it. But our formulas are going to fit this pattern. So we have a sub n. So it's going to be the nth term, some random term in the sequence, equals a sub 1. a sub 1 is the first term, plus n minus 1 times d, and d is the yeah, that common difference is what we're adding each time you get from one number to the next. So what we could do then is if we were to jump back to my last example, we had this 2, 5, 8, each time we're adding 3, right? So then the 3 goes in for which letter in there? I'm adding 3 each time, 3 goes in for the uh, D. Yep, because it's that common difference is what we're adding. And the N is kind of like our variable. It's kind of like X at this point, if you're trying to write the formula. But to describe a sequence, you need to say, well, how much is it going up each time? And you also need to say what number it starts with, right? And our last example started with uh, a 2. So the first term, then, A sub 1 is going to be a 2. 
So this here in green would be the formula for the last example. Good? So let's say the question says, find the fourth term. So find the fourth term. Well, the fourth term is going to be A sub N. But what's N going to be for the fourth term? Four. And again, if we jump back to the example before, our first term was A sub 1 right here. Our second term was A sub 2. Our third term was A sub 3. So our fourth term would just be A sub 4, right? Well, this goes back to kind of that Euler's notation. When we have this, my 4 is just in the same spot as the N. Agreed? So as we go through and do the right side of the equation, I have 2 plus anyone? 4 minus 1. And then times 3. So now, from here, we have to do the 4 minus 1 first, so we get a 3 times 3, and then we have that plus 2. Yeah, 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 you're trying to slow me down. So 9 plus 2 is 11. So the fourth term in the list would be 11. I want to do one more example, and for that we'll pick a totally new sequence. So for the sequence B, 5, and then 9, 13. So if you look at this, each time we're going up by 4. So I'll just write over here a D equals 4 for that common difference being 4. And first of all, I want to say, well, what's, how would you write an explicit formula for that? And until you get good at writing explicit formulas, a really good idea is going to be to go and write out the general formula every time and then go and fill stuff in. That'll help you two ways. One, it'll help you memorize this, because I'm going to ask you to know it from memory at the test. And two, it will make it more likely that you're going to get it right. So every time we fill in an explicit formula, we put in two bits of information. We put in that first term, and we put in the common difference. So our first term, then, is 5. And the common difference, what we're adding each time, is going to be a 4. And then I just fill in the rest of the stuff, my n minus 1, my equals, and my a sub n. And then maybe for our last step, let's say we're trying to find the 12th term. So if you're trying to find the 12th term, we'll say a sub 12. And now all you need to do is look and see, okay, so 12 is in my n spot. And on the right side of this equation, n is the thing we don't know. So then we could fill in a 12 for n. And now as we go through and simplify, first we need to figure out what's in the parentheses. That'll be 11 times 4. And then we have the plus 5 added on to that. So 11 plus 4 is 44. And we add 5 as a final step for a total of 49. So in other words, the 12th term in our list is going to be 49, the 12th term in our sequence. And I want to just kind of mention why this works the way it does. And if I take that original equation, so 5, 9, 13, 17. So 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, 25. We won't make it all the way up to 49. But if we look at what we're doing there, so we're adding 4 over and over and over again. And just want to kind of look at why that formula works the way it does. That makes it a whole lot easier to remember. And if we say we're looking for this term here, the 21, that's going to be the fifth number in my sequence. That's a sub 5. Well, do you agree to find the 21? I started here with my first term, and I added 4 to it four times, and that gives me the fifth term. If we go back to our original equation, if I take and say I'm trying to find the fifth term here, well, I take my first term, which is right there, my a sub 1, and... I multiply 4, or I add 4, so first term, add 4, 4 times. That's how I get my fifth term. If instead I'm looking for my third term here, a sub 3, to get a sub 3 I take my first term, the 5, and I add 4 now to it twice. Well, that's what our equation does. It takes the 5 right here, and it adds... 4 to it, this 4 here. But now that I'm looking for my third term, I have to change my n value to a 3. So I have my 5 plus 4 two times. Where the n minus 1, the stuff in parentheses, is saying that it's always going to add 4 
one less time than whatever term number I'm looking for. That's the gist of why it works as a formula.